Hey guys, what's up? Yes, I'm doing a second video today. So, um, this is going to be about uh, recent comments, and we've got some pretty interesting recent comments about Mormonism and the world and wor <laughs> events and trutherism and. Um, yeah, I, don't even, I was going to venture into Facebook to talk about uh, some things I saw there, but we've got so many comments, I don't even, it's not that we have a ton of them, but we have a number of you know, interesting ones that I, I think I'd like to discuss right now. Um, also, I made a mistake this morning, it doesn't really affect, it doesn't at all affect the conclusion regarding the, uh, the insanity of believing that we live on a spinning ball. But um, looking over at the shore here, okay, you, you can see how those totally level, you know, fence bars are lined up with the coast across there. The coast, however, there is not the coast in Windsor, Canada. That's kind of jutting out, sort of in the way. Or in other words, it's to the left and towards the right is is, is really where that 30 mile distance was. What we're looking at across there. Probably about five miles. Nevertheless, everything is still level, and a uh, yeah, a, a circle dropping at the ratio, you know, of 1.57 to one. <laughs> they try to make it look believable by giving you these bullshit numbers, like eight inches per mile, all oh, then squared, which is insane. Uh, because the second mile would be different from the first mile, so if you get to where that second mile is, now it's just, yeah, right. Okay, anyway. Um, we're going to go straight into the comments here. You don't need to be looking at me. You see me just kind of like gyrating as I'm li listening to uh, my playlist right now. Rocking out. Yeah, damn it from Blink-182 is on right now, just in case anybody wondered, so I'm, yeah, feeling a little hyperactive. So we're going in, this, this is my, um, uh, this is, this is YouTube creator uh, stuff, so in here you get stats on videos, and the one I just created is just doing terrible. Of course, the average view duration is 15 minutes per view out of 11 views it says. I think I got 12 really if we go into videos. But that's, yeah, anyway, that, that, that's that's awful. But you know that's the way it is sometimes. The, the last one got off to a decent start, 57. When 57 is decent something's really wrong, right? Okay, now it's a 4 out of 10. And Just so if, you, if it's of interest, you, you look at these ratings here. So it's, it's comparing um, you know, typical views, 55 but on that one after, what, two days and two hours as compared to a normal range stated between 38 and 54, so that's actually really good. Um, really good for how bad my numbers are these days. Average view duration, 16 minutes and almost a half versus, you know, 9, 10 to 12. Um, so that's really good. And then 903 minutes versus 377 to 656 normal. Why isn't this showing as a number one? You know? Why? I don't know. Google's ways are higher than my ways? Is, is, is that what we're supposed to say? That's what, that, that sounds like, you know, what Christianity would say when shit doesn't make sense. God's ways are incomprehensible. They're higher than your ways. Anyway, let's get into some of these comments. Had some, I, I told somebody recently, <coughs> a couple of people, that I would use their comments here. So let's, let's do this. Let's go right through and let's hit comments. All right, well, this person has got a uh, YouTube video for us, and I don't know what that is, so I'm not going to click on it right now. All right, Brazil Bro. And uh, let's see if we can... And I can't see which video he's commenting on. So he says... And so Brazil Bro has commented before. He's um, a guy who went on a mission to Brazil and experienced things that helped him to realize Mormonism was not what the brethren claimed it was. 
Hold on. I got to... I gotta soften the uh, the music a little bit here, just a little bit, because I don't want my thoughts to be entirely drowned out there by Kurt Cobain. All right, so he says, "Dear Elder Jacobs," so he's talking about uh, Henry Jacobs, uh, who Joseph Smith got to witness him stealing his wife for all eternity basically when she was I believe six months pregnant and Henry Jacobs witnessed Joseph Smith having his wife Henry Jacobs wife sealed to Joseph for the rest of eternity so how's that for the prophet screwing you over right so here, here we go and then Brigham Young uh, well he finished finished matters off in a in fact it's one of the most sickening stories I've ever heard, but let's, let's see what he says. He says, Dear Elder Jacobs, in your absence, the Lord has seen fit that I wed your bride while you are serving the Lord on a mission. Worry not, your wife will be cared for in a way only a prophet seer and ravisher could provide. Sorry, not. Continue your mission, and most importantly, continue to pay tithing. That ought, that thou return faithful to re, that thou was, uh, return faithful to your family. So it, jo, sincerely, Joseph. <laughs> Emphasis placed on sincerely, right? Fifteen years later, Brigham Young says, "Dear brother Jacobs, the Lord has seen fit that I, Brigham." Okay, where's the rest of it? So basically, in that one, it's that's the one where, it's, where, where, where we hear the quote where Brigham Young says, it's time that men that are walking in other men's shoes get out of them. And uh, Brother Jacobs, I'm taking possession. Your, your wife and children are now my property. And that's one of the most sickening uh, things I've ever read in Mormonism. And so, uh, thanks, thanks for those uh, comments, Brazil bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I do believe that. Well, I know that several guys got sent on missions, and Jacobs may have been one of them. But I believe he actually witnessed the sealing of his wife to Joseph Smith. Um, this, I, 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 yeah, it's one of the things that drove me over the edge when I found uh, I found it on the the uh, website called Honoring the Wives of Joseph Smith. And it's truly one of the most sickening things I've ever ever read regarding the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay, um, here's one. New Miscellaneous, three days ago, says, The IRS is not a U.S. government agency. It is an agency of the IMF, International Monetary Fund. Diversified metal products versus... IRS at all. Uh, it, so anyway, if, if you're read, if you're looking at this, he's he's referencing a ruling in a court case, public law, etc. Senate report. I'm not going to read all those numbers because I'll be too dyslexified. But it's there. If you're looking at it, you can look that up. So that's a, you know, that's a documented reference to what he's he or she is stating here. The IMF, International Monetary Fund, is an agency of the United Nations, according to Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition, page 816. Another great reference. The United States has not had a treasury since 1921. 41 Stat, chapter uh, 214, page 654. Okay. It's a reference I don't even understand. The U.S. Treasury is now the IMF. Presidential Documents, Volume 24, uh, page 4. Number 4, page 113, excuse me. Uh, 22 USC, meaning U.S. Code, United States Code, 285-2887. So, how's that for your version of reality, people? The United States does not have any employees because there is no longer a United States. No more reorganizations. After over 200 years of bankruptcy, it is finally over, according to Executive Order 12803. 
So I've talked about the United States going through bankruptcies. Uh, the United States company, it's a company, it was the Virginia company, it got a name change from what I have read to be called the United States. Okay, yes, it's a corporation, yes, it was privately owned. And uh, so we got the, we got the Federal Reserve uh, Act in 1913, starting the Fed Bank. Uh, Jackson had gotten rid of uh, the the uh, you know uh, J.P. Morgan Rothschild controlled uh, uh, Bank of the United States, I believe it was called, and uh, I think Lincoln wanted to do that again, and uh, well, you know what happened to him. So um, in 1913, we got the uh, the Federal Reserve Act passed, and. Uh, I believe that happened while um, Congress was uh, mostly out uh, for Christmas vacation. So there was a limited, uh, was, was that the one called the Aldridge Bill? Uh, uh, you know, Nelson Aldridge, for instance. Uh, well, anyway, so they intermarried with the Rockefellers, in case you're not familiar with that. So this is, this is what set up the privately owned banking system, European, you know, invested banking system. And if you look and see which banks originally invested with that, you've got all kinds of uh, stuff from Europe, maybe Schroeder Bank, you know, and, uh, you know, the Habsburgs, and Habsburgs, Rothschilds, uh, a number uh, of uh, Mellons, uh, you know, a, a number of, I think they're mostly European. And so you've got a privately owned banking system that is creating money for the company called the United States, which is the you know, master plantation of the group of plantations that are privately owned that we live on. When I've talked about states, counties, cities, school districts, all these privately owned enterprises that function as, uh, as transnational investment banks, basically, in, in, the, in, in the stock that they own of companies all over the world. and and collectively hold, you know, apparently a, a controlling interest in most, if not all, of the Fortune 500 companies. Hey, there comes a bird. So, um, it took them 20 years to bankrupt that, as far as I know, which would have been in, uh, in 1933, which is when FDR mandated stealing the gold from our people here in the United States. Um, <laughs> probably to, to cover the debt with this uh, European-owned uh, bank, the the Fed Bank, the Fed Bank system there. So, um, I believe it was uh, nine, in the '70s, and then again in 1993, and uh, that the, the you know United States has gone bankrupt to our own Fed Bank, which prints money, not just prints, but causes creates debt out of nothing, out of thin air, especially as as, as can be shown uh, through the way uh, commercial banking creates mortgages, etc. Uh, you know, using fractional reserve banking. In other words, if you got five dollars in the bank, if the bank has five dollars in reserves, they, you know, maybe perhaps it can loan a hundred when it only has five. So you're creating money out of nothing, and um, that's that that that's how a vast amount, a, a huge amount of our inflation occurs. That and deficit spending, and then Treasury securities are sold to secure, uh, you know, what, what is borrowed uh, from this money that's created out of nothing at interest, and now that's the big thing. <laughs> if the United States company created its own money, it wouldn't charge itself interest. So the interest that is charged by the Fed banking system basically sucks the life out of our economy. And so the United States company has gone bankrupt one time too many is what uh, this individual is documenting for us in a system that was designed to enslave us all. Now, when I was in the mortgage business, my appraiser was a black guy from Jamaica. He had uh, received a, an accounting degree uh, at SDSU. Come, he, he, actually, his life was very interesting. Uh, how, how he came to the United States, uh, somebody helped him out. He was out. He was hustling, selling mangoes to tourists and stuff in Jamaica, I believe. And he got a break. Someone sent him to the United States. He got an accounting degree. He got involved in, as a you know, um, what, what, what do you call those guys? Uh, 
<clears throat> anyway, guys that interface with it, an enrolled agent, that sort of a thing, dealing with the IRS, and uh, did taxes and accounting, and eventually got into uh, real property appraisal. And he said to me, David, one day the Fed bankers, guys, the elitists at the top, said, why just enslave the blacks when we can enslave everyone? And that's how we got the Fed system, or that's a lot of the thinking behind it. And, you know, there's a lot of truth to that statement, in my opinion. Okay. And again, he may not have been aware there were a lot of white people that were officially slaves. They just called them uh, indentured servants, and they were dying in the fields of Barbados and South Carolina just the same way that black slaves were. They died in greater numbers on a percentage basis, which is why the uh, African slavery trade became uh, you know, the, the dominant way to um, provide for the plantations because the, uh, the black slaves survived the heat better, is what I've read. Probably had 100,000 uh, white people that were slaved. That's where we got the, kid, the term kidnapped, actually. It, what, what happened in Europe uh, was horrible, but it's not politically correct to talk about white people uh, who've been, you know, enslaved, unless we're talking maybe about uh, sexual slavery. So um, that's kind of disappeared from our history books. It's uh, rather interesting, and it's horrific, just like uh, enslaving the blacks and enslaving some of the Native Americans. Though so many of them were killed with smallpox and just the slaughter of the Catholic-led Spaniards that, uh, well, there weren't that many left over by the time they put the survivors on reservations. But that was the will of the Lord, according to the Book of Mormon, you know. And and, and, and all his wrath was upon them for not believing in Jesus that they'd never freaking heard of. Um, he was still merciful to them, according to the Book of Mormon. Yeah, it's incredible. Of course, the Holy Ghost was uh, upon Columbus, guiding him to the Americas, because the Holy Ghost likes butchers like that piece of shit, right? Okay, enough of that for now. I'm just saying that the Manifest Dex Destiny Doctrine out of the 19th century novel called the Book of Mormon is filled with stuff that when you really fact check is thought provoking and obviously we are not ruled by an all-knowing, unchanging, loving, merciful, non-hypocritical God. If the Book of Mormon has, uh, or the Bible, <laughs> are accurately are, are, are the word of this God in any way, shape, or form. Yes, Christians, the Bible too, but I'm not going to harp on that too much right now. The United States does not have any employees. Okay, we went, so we went over that portion there, okay? What do we got? The FCC, CIA, FBI, NASA, and all other alphabet gangs, or alphabet companies as I call them, were never part of the United States government, even though the U.S. government held stock in the agencies. Held stock. There we go. Private ownership through stock ownership. Again, as I've been saying, if you check the comprehensive annual financial reports, that's the story that they tell. Unfortunately, most of them categorize investments rather than specify. If you can read one where it specifies them, it's even more interesting. So he's documenting this from a, a court case, U.S. versus Strang, 254 U.S. 491 Lewis versus U.S. 680 F. 2nd, 1239. Okay, so anyway, fact check him or her. And I, Why do I say him? I, I don't know if we're talking, if, 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 you know, the gender of the person. Social security numbers are issued by the United Nations through the IMF. The application for a social security number is the SS5 form. The Department of the Treasury, IMF based, issues the SS5 form, not the Social Security Administration. The new SS5 forms do not state who publishes them, while the old form states they are Department of the Treasury, 20 CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, Chapter 111, Subpart B, 422103B. Okay, that's interesting. 
So this is going along with the theme that our reality, or what we, what we are told is reality, especially with the Manifest Destiny Doctrine, taught in the Book of Mormon and in Christianity, that the Israelite God inspired people to come from Europe to the United States to build a land of freedom, have the God-inspired Constitution of the United States, so that we'd be prepared for the return of Jesus Christ and uh, practicing pure Christianity, which is his will, of course. Probably including burning the girls and drowning and burning the girls who survived the drowning in Salem, Massachusetts by the Christians. Because God really does believe in religious tolerance. There are no judicial courts in America and have not been since 1789. Judges do not enforce statutes and codes. Executive administrators enforce statutes and codes. Sorry, sorry. Hope you're okay. If it makes you any fit better, I'll, I'll tell you one that happened to me. I was, I was going surfing, and I was holding my board, kind of, you know, I could see over it, and I was, I was going over some sand dunes to check out some waves, and I was kind of running because I was excited. A picnic bench like that took me out. My shins just demolished. Shins are for finding things in the dark, though, not in the light. Okay, so, yeah, some poor kid just ran into a picnic bench on his bike. All right. So getting back to here, judicial courts do not exist in America according to this. And we have executive administrators. Now, I haven't been to court a lot, but a lot of times I have uh, noticed that we did have um, ad executive administrators, which I believed were standing in for judges because... We didn't have enough judges. Now there are people that I believe were judges. Uh, however, he's got a reference. He or she has got a reference on this, so be interested to, to check that out too. Next, there have not been any judges in America since 1799. Okay, that's what I just read. Sorry. According to GATT, that's a treaty kind of like NAFTA, by the way, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. You must have a social security number. Yeah, a lot of folks ask for it in dealing with money. Next, New York City is defined in federal regulations as the United Nations. Rudolph Gulli, uh, Rudy Giuliani stated on C-SPAN that New York City is the capital of the world. For once, he told the truth. 20 CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, Chapter 111, Subpart... Anyway, you can see what it says there. All right, next. Social Security is not insurance or a contract, nor is there a trust fund. Reference is Helvering versus Davis, 301 U.S. 619 Stewart Avenue versus Davis, 301 whatever. Okay, once again, if you want to check it, uh, I, I got the resolutions, uh, I believe, at adequate hopefully that you can see this otherwise you can go into the comments yourself but I, I put it on 480 uh, plus uh, at, at the 2.5 okay your social security check comes directly from the International Monetary Fund which is an agency of the United Nations it states US Department of Treasury at the top left corner which again is part of the United Nations as pointed out above next you own no property. Slaves can't own property. Read carefully. The deed to your property you think is yours. You are listed as a tenant. Senate Document 43, 73rd Congress for a session. Um, I've read it. Uh, that is absolutely correct. When I was in real estate uh, as a professional, I took the time to read some grant deeds and you are listed as a tenant not the owner. You are not an owner. Um, another reference that could be given here would be out of Black's Law. And what you see in Black's Law, uh, if you look up the term human, 
is a reference that says sea monster. Not not like a sea monster, like a you know Loch Ness monster or a sea monster or something, right? Um, but it's referencing. Go go check out what we got under monster. Now Hollywood has got you believing that monsters are you know the monster from the Blank Lagoon, but a monster is defined uh, in Black's Law, and we are monsters. Uh, according to Black's Law. Monsters cannot own property. So um, this is consistent with what we find on a deed. So in other words, you can't own anything in a lodium. So if you say, I'm buying real estate, why is it called real estate, not just real property? It's because it's held in estate, meaning <laughs> you are giving a particular interest in that property you can you can have control over it to a certain degree and a profit or or you know or experience profit or loss according to a, you know uh, its market value uh, when you purchase or when you sell your interest your interest in it but you do not own it in a lodium okay Ex examining I don't know if I, I've never been able to examine the documents, you know, with the townships and sections and so forth, but seeing how much the railroad and AT&T own are, is amazing. So a, a lot of businesses and, and, and rights and things that you think you own are actually uh, in estate or being leased to you effectively. All right, next. The most powerful court in America is not the United States Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. Interesting. Didn't know that. So we've got a reference, 42 PA CSA 502. Next, the King of England financially backed both sides of the American Revolutionary War. Treaty of Versailles, July 16, 1782, Treaty of Peace, 8 Stat 80. Okay, so regarding that, um, if you read the Treaty of Versailles, which I've done uh, as part of when you know, I began checking out a lot of history. Well, actually, I was—I've been a student of history since I was a, a little, a small child. To, to to be honest, since I was a very small child, I was interested in history, um, and um, I mean, I started reading the Bible when I was four. Not that the Bible's history, but uh, if, if you can see a pattern. Um, I'm not going to go too deep onto that rabbit hole, but, you know, I, 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 was, I was associated with uh, the John Birch Society, not necessarily a member, but I was associated with it uh, since the time I was about 13 years old. And uh, at 14, I went to the John Birch Society summer youth camp. Um, you know, uh, heavily attended probably by Mormons or staffed by Christians and Mormons, you know, Catholics, Mormons, other Christian type people. And um, then I dug deeper than they were going. And uh, I found that this manifest destiny doctrine that the churches and the John Birch Society teach, you know, that we got to defend our freedom in this land of the free and home of the brave business, uh, you know, guide, given by and established by the God of the Israelites is really not accurate at all. Uh, so their, their idea of how the New World Order is Satan's plan to take over what God started for us that was good in America is completely erroneous as well. The fact of the matter is that our reality is much different than we have ever been told by any of these groups, which are actually controlled opposition. In fact, I think Robert Welch was possibly a 33rd degree Freemason and, you know, just misleading people as much as Ross Perot or, uh, or uh, Ron Paul and his son. The, 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 they are, you know, fake freedom fighters, basically, is what, what, what we find here. They know what the real deal is. The real deal is the United States <laughs> company was the, uh, you know, the Virginia company. What they know is that <sighs> we live on privately owned plantations, and this whole bit about us being free and sovereign is, is absolute BS. It's... Uh, 
it's 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 mind washed because uh, people, slaves perform best when they believe that they're free, and we're most productive that way. So. The King of England financed or backed both sides of the war, is what he's saying here. Well, the Treaty of Versailles, when you see the representatives of the of the colonists who became, you know, the United States, right? Who do you, you got? Uh, Franklin J. and God, it's terrible. I, I should is it, was it Adams? So oh, anyway, um, look it up. Federalist Papers, that sort of thing, right? Anyway, um, you see our. our First of all, we got guys. If they're a lawyer, then they're already, you know, sworn to sworn to the uh, the crown. When I say the crown, I don't mean the king. I mean the crown corporation uh, that the king serves. The king or the queen of England serves there, which is an independent country, basically, uh, encompassing about what a square a mile square in the financial district of London, one of the three capitals of the world, according to some folks. Washington D.C. being you know, the District of Columbia being the, uh, uh, the, the military capital and the religious capital there at, uh, at the Vatican. All, these are all independent, you know, sovereign states. Okay. And so this crown, the Crown Corporation, which I believe would be a, a you know, a, a, a Roman-owned thing uh, in, the, in the end. I mean, Rome invaded uh, England. And, uh, in uh, 499, was it was it not? And if the, the history of that's rather interesting. So, if you read the Treaty of Versailles, so you've got guys signing for the United States, the, the patriots, the colonists that that have their loyalty sworn to the House of Inns there, right? Uh, in in uh, at the Temple Bar in in London. Does that, does that sound just a little bit wrong, okay, to be representing the colonists? But and that's who you've got. And what is it that they signed at the Treaty of Versailles? What, 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 what do they sign? Well, they enslaved you further to, to British banks. You would think that the colonists lost the war if you see what they signed for us. They enslaved us to pay British banks truckloads, trainloads, boatloads of money. Do you do that when you win? So was it all a sham? <laughs> well, was Washington not nobility? It's sick. Anyway, once again, you've been, you've been, you've been sold a bill of goods. The, the Treaty of Versailles is evidence of it. Next, says this person, you cannot use the United States Constitution to, se to defend yourself because you are not a party to it. And this is being referenced in a court case here. Uh, Paddleford, Fay and Company versus the mayor and alderman of the city of Savannah, Georgia. So the city of Savannah, 14, Georgia, 438, 520. So there's a reference there. I have had... I, 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 I've seen a judge say the Constitution doesn't apply here. It doesn't apply in this court. I've seen a, a judge say, I don't care what the law states. I'm doing it my way. <laughs> Basically, see what you can do about it. Um, and in one point, that was in my favor. And in one point, it was not. Um, but yeah, the, the law was like, who cares what the law is? I don't care what the law is. This is what I'm going to rule. I like this sea captain here. And I'm going to rule for him, even though the law states that the bank... And therefore, you as the, as the brokers own the appraisal and you don't have to give it to this guy who's stiffed you twice on, on, on two locks and, you know, screws you over with the banks. You, you still have to give it to him. Um, or, or you're going to have to pay for his new appraisal, even though the law states that it does not belong to him right in the contract. Okay? Uh, the, other, the other time was... Uh, my then wife uh, was uh, in court against her ex-husband, and uh, he was uh, being represented by an attorney. And my wife's English was so uh, difficult to understand that the judge uh, wanted uh, an interpreter. And uh, I said, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to do that. My, not that my Portuguese is any good, but I was happy to basically go one-on-one -on -one with a lawyer. 
And then the lawyer, his lawyer says, hey, no, this guy's not certified by the court. And the judge said, I, you know what? I don't care. This is my court. You know what? It's going to happen my way, baby. And that is the way it happened. So law, constitution, no, they, they, we don't deal with law generally in court. We deal with, or maybe at all, we deal with U.S. code, United States code, and uh, uniform commercial code. That's how we are governed. Everything is commerce. Those who understand the law generally don't wind up going to prison too much. That's why you see companies like Chase Manhattan settling uh, you know, for value rather than their executives going to prison for um, sexual harassment cases or something in the past, right? All right, next. America is a British colony. The United States is a corporation, not a land mass. And it existed before the Revolutionary War, and the British troops did not leave until 1796. Yeah, that's all absolutely factually true, as far as I've, re I, I've researched that myself. Republica versus Swears, uh, 1 Dallas 4, Treaty of Commerce, etc., 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 ADA IRS Publication 6209, Articles of Association, uh, October 20, 1774. So, um, next. Yes, so the United States is a British colony, and I, I believe that Britain is a Roman colony. After all, if you read that Treaty of Versailles that we were talking about, uh, the representatives of the king are signing for the king, and the king uh, uh, it titles himself King George, Prince of the Holy Roman Empire. It's more than religion, folks. Next, Britain is owned by the Vatican, Treaty of 1213. Well, there you go. Next, the Pope can abolish any law in the United States. Reference Elements of Ecclesiastical Law, Volume 1, 53 and 54. Next. You see, if you understand the whole business about sovereignty, you will understand that basically everything is owned through Rome. Though Rome is owned basically by the black nobility, or the Venetian nobility as you may choose to call them. The papal bloodlines. Okay, A. 1040 form. A 1040 form is for tribute paid to Britain. IRS publication 6209. Well, that'd be interesting to check out. It's effectively what's happening, I'm sure, but I didn't know there was an IRS publication we could read on that. The Pope claims to own the entire, he says, this person uses the word planet, through the laws of conquest and discovery. Papal bulls of 1495 and 1493. I don't know that the word planet's used there. Let's check that out. The Pope has ordered the genocide and enslavement of millions of people, papal bulls of 1455 and 1493. There's no doubt about that. But God is good. Oh, God isn't responsible for the Pope? But the Pope is responsible for what is called God's Word as far as what was uh, canonized in the Bible. And the Bible basically says that God said to do the same goddamn thing. So fuck all you people that defend God's misogyny, genocide, narcissism, and everything else. Next, the Pope's laws are obligatory on everyone. And we've got a reference for that that you can read. Next, we are slaves and own absolutely nothing, not even what we think are our children. Unfortunately, that's the truth. Ever dealt with CPS? They don't really need due process to do anything. Although we do seem to have some due process that occurs. They get to keep your kids for like five weeks, you know, without any due process while you're trying to fight and generally they adopt the kids out to somebody very quickly and you're screwed and your kids are screwed and enslaved oftentimes too. We are slaves and own nothing. Okay, 
Uh, the reference for that there was Tillman versus Roberts, 108, uh, etc. I'm not going to read all these re references. Senate document, Congress, first session, blah, blah, blah. Wine, Weinhammer versus the people, 13, New York, rep, 37841. All right, I'm not going to read all of it. read some of it just to, in case anybody's, uh, you know, working with headphones on. Next, military dictator George Washington divided up the states, S states, into districts. Messages and Papers of the Presidents, Volume 1, page 99, 1828, Dictionary of Estate. Another great reference. Next, the people, the people, in quotations, does not include you and me. Baron versus Mayor and City Council of Baltimore, 32 U.S. 243. Next, it is not the duty of the police to protect you. <laughs> You've heard this from me before. The job is to protect the corporation and arrest code breakers. As I've said, when it, when it says to protect and serve on the, on the police cars, it's to protect and serve the municipal corporation that they're employed by, not you. But they put that on there so that you will think that. It's a little misleading, right? Yeah, and, and so we've got a reference here. SAPP versus Tallahassee, etc., etc., etc. Read it. Next, everything in the United States, quotation, so that's talking about the corporation, is up for sale. Bridges, roads, water, schools, hospitals, prisons, airports, etc., etc. Did anybody take the time to check who bought Klamath Lake? Executive Order 12803. A great reference for that would be watching the video called um, Corporation Nation that I have taken the liberty of using about 40 minutes of the 3 hours and 13 minutes that it is uh, in uh, one of my larger videos, it was the first of a trilogy uh, talking about corporate governance, illuminated Freemasonry and corporate governance of the United States, etc. And uh, so I, I took uh, what I thought were some of the most pertinent parts out of that, um, demonstrating the, the private ownership and commercial nature of our entire society. Anyway, 100% in line with uh, what this person is sharing with us. We are all human capital. Executive Order 13037. Next, the United Nations has financed the operations of the United States government for over 50 years. U.S. Department of Treasury is part of the U.N., see above, and now owns every man, woman, and child in America. The United Nations also holds all of the land of America in fee simple. So how can that be? Well, when the, when the, when the United States company um, went ahead and uh, borrowed money at interest, when it could have printed its own frickin' money, okay, which is really one of the reasons you might have see for excuses for having the Revolutionary War in the first place would not have been anything to do with some freaking tea party and tea taxes. It would have had to, to do with printing the colonists printing money uh, that wasn't paying interest to British banks. So the United Nations, um, in, in this case, um, being referenced, it says now owns every man, woman, and child in America. We have been used, um, we have been hypothecated as security for the loans uh, made. So first they hypothecate land, and then that all got taken, and next, you know, they, they hypothecated gold, then land, mineral rights, whatever, uh, and then humans for the debts incurred by negative spending on the budget in out business. When I say the budget in out, because you've got taxes in and 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 budget, you know, expenses exceeding them always in the pattern used to create more debt. 
Well, these same companies hold investments all over the world that don't benefit you one iota, which is what you'll see in that Corporation Nation video, by the way. Well documented with the comprehensive annual financial reports, etc. Really good video. Next, okay, um, okay. The, the UN also holds all land in the United States in fee simple. Look at Utah, ninety-seven percent, what federally owned or whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. How does that happen, people? Okay, next, simple words such as person, citizen, people, or nation, crime, charge, right, statute, preferred, prefer, constitutor, creditor, debtor, debit discharge, payment, law, and United States don't mean what you think they mean. It does because we were never taught the legal definitions of the above words. Again, if you look those up in Black's Law, and it may take older editions sometimes to find answers on certain, certain things, you will note <laughs> the world is not what it's been painted to be in your so-called education, in your indoctrination. So uh, these are some of the most, uh, you know, interesting, amazing, and awesome references, unfortunately, documenting that we belong to the Quaff Society once we understand them. Quaff, K-W-A-F stands for knowing we are fucked. Sorry, people. Oh, mom, you probably weren't listening anyway. Okay. Yeah. They're taking the, he, this person has taken a lot of the guesswork out of it. It's not conspiracy theory when you actually find the devil in the details, like I mentioned this morning. Next, we've got, okay, I responded, so I'm not gonna, well, what did I just say? Hey, thanks for, uh, sharing this great documented information, I will go ahead and do a video featuring you, which is what we're doing right now. In fact, I'm gonna to have to do those other folks probably in a separate video, because this one's getting a little bit long. And okay, next, next, uh, I got a response here. It says, Dodger Dave, I hate that people have been paying mortgages for years, that have been paying mortgages for years, have no idea that they are tenants and still don't own the house they've been paying on. It makes me sick. All right, so let's, oops, no, we're not gonna remove. We're gonna put, give the love heart there. Yeah. Yeah, and this person has done what I've done. It's called taking the time to do some research and find out that we are fucked. Yeah, sorry, people. But perhaps we can, perhaps we can ease the pain with a little, KY, right now. Perhaps we. <laughs> All right, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> for, <laughs> for coconut oil, people, stay natural. You don't want that petroleum shit in your body. So, um, like what I'm trying to do here is return a little bit of power to the people, even though the representatives, the elected representatives, don't really truly represent our interests because they are serving the corporation not us but they make us feel like we've got representation and there are some issues that can affect us in positive ways if we you know if we help so i do these ballot initiatives and in the case here in michigan i'm trying to return at least what the people believe is representative government or partially representative government uh by stripping this bitch of the uh, you know powers of the emergency powers act of the governor of 1945 which allow her to eliminate the legislative branch of government from participation and she's ruling strictly by executive order so conservatives love this and uh, everyone should you know that at least believes they've got some representation supposedly in the legislator and maybe some small businesses would be benefited but thereby because Perhaps you know their 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 so-called representatives would um, help help small mom and pop shops be ruled as essential businesses, 
uh, instead of non-essential while the large corporate businesses are consistently being ruled as essential and if they're not they've got deep pockets so they'll survive this while the goal of wiping out small enterprises privately owned by individuals instead of the corporate interest um, you know held by the government <laughs> and are, 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 are destroyed in this pandemic. Okay. How long have we been going here? 50 minutes. Should we include maybe one other commenter here? Probably in this venue. Maybe. Okay, let's go. All right. All right, well, okay, Brazil, bro. This isn't necessarily this venue, but it's, uh, it's a good comment. It says, I used to, I also used ex spiritual experiences to justify staying in the church. It was hard to separate that reality, or it was hard to separate that reality isn't black and white. There's so much we don't know. If there are other dimensions, etc., religion just seems to be the way humans explain it to themselves. If there wasn't money and power in religion, we would all just have beliefs and that would be the end of it. Well, okay, we'll go. There's a lot that I agree with that, within that, except for, um, I don't. I don't, I don't buy, you know, I don't, I don't feel that it's just the way, well, people get brought into that to explain, uh, explain things, you know, why yeah, free agency, God just lets you have free agency. That's why he mismanages the whole world and lets psychopaths rule really, it, right? Um, but, but the origin of religion is, is, is not accidental. It is religion is constructed we have a priest class that is here to deify the offices of government to 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 deify the authority of those who are the owners of the plantations that we obey and political correctness which is a term a tavistokian type created term for purpose notice it's positive it says Correct. So it's correct, right? We're, we're, you're a conspiracy theorist. So the, built within the term is either approval for or disapproval for uh, what the term is aimed at. And so, yeah, religion is created for purpose to create submission. That's why it says, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, unto God that which is God's. It's teaching, turn the other cheek, all that shit. It's teaching submission to the Roman Empire when they created you know, the character called Jesus in the New Testament. All right, what do we got here? Who we got here? Truthers unite. All right. Two weeks ago, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is God's one true church. This is something all humble men and women can know for themselves through faithful prayer. Apparently, you, meaning me, don't care that members have gone through that route to fact check whether it is true. Satan teaches a man not to pray. That's what the Book of Mormon says. What do you teach? You are an antichrist. Keep digging yourself a hole to hell. <laughs> if you so choose, may you fall into the pit you've dug yourself. <laughs> I'll give a like anyway. What the hell, right? Okay, so... This person's bringing up the uh, something that that Brazil brother was also Brazil bro was mentioning there using spiritual experiences to justify remaining in a church that is filled with contradiction and lies because we've been trained, brainwashed, conditioned uh, to interpret you know to to interpret spiritual experiences as ratification that our belief system in which we've been conditioned, whether it's Muslim, Mormon, Christian, Catholic, whatever, is true. And we can have experiences that are specifically designed by some being that we don't see 
to promote the idea that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints specifically is true. As I did as a missionary when a voice spoke to me while teaching a discussion, a missionary discussion to people, and the voice said, testify in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thought that seems a little awkward right now. I'm just starting this concept. Maybe at the end of the whole discussion would be a better idea. And then the voice spoke again to me, testify in the name of Jesus Christ as I was about to finish my concept. Well, my compadre, companion as they like to call them, it sounds kind of too gay for me, uh, was waiting for his turn. And so I went ahead and did it and they were magic words, boom. A light lit up the room, a feeling came in that was just amazing. You know, maybe close to what Ozzy feels when the crowd goes wild and he said it's better than sex. Well, they were baptized. The brother, as I've stated before in other videos, was looking at the brother. My God. Anyway, the head, the, the dad, who's the head of the family in all these patriarchal uh, uh, programming uh, religions, um, looked at me, looked up, looked all around, had his palms of his hands out. He was noticing the light all around us, the, the incredible feeling. Everyone, I don't know if, what everyone else was experiencing, but he was obviously experiencing it as well as me and said, Dave, what's happening? What is this? And I said, it's the Holy Spirit testifying to the truth of our message. So that entire experience was actually geared at, at, at exactly what this individual is talking about, at converting us to believe that the message was true. Unfortunately, the message, the gospel, the scriptures contains, you know, self-contradictory material. There are plenty of conflicts, there are plenty of rewritten histories, lies throughout the LDS canon um, of, of combined uh, teachings. Remember, we're supposed to call general conference talk scripture. At least we were. Now they probably don't want you to, they, they don't want to say, admit that they said that probably since Brigham Young, you know, in the Journal of Discourses, we can find so many things that they now call false teachings, right? Bottom line, the Holy Ghost testifies that lies are true. The Holy Ghost, or whatever this pres spiritual presence is, testifies that things are true, that the canons of Scripture are true, that have, you know, <laughs> conflicting and contradicting, self-contradictory within the canon, uh, information and claims and things that are provably false, like uh, the flood of Noah, that's provably false. Another perfect example of where uh, controlled opposition and, and so forth and apologetics try to keep the argument that's in the public eye in, 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 an air, in a venue or in, 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 within the bounds that the Lord has set so that we can continue to argue and not have anything definitive. They talk about how many animals could fit in the ark, all this kind of bullshit. Well, folks, we've got like histories going, written histories, like in, in Egypt, you know, and maybe Sumeria. We've got evidences of the, the civilization of the, uh, the civilization of the Chinese, whether or not that it was written history at that point or not. We've got evidence of the American Indians who, the, who, who, who migrated along before supposedly Adam was the first flesh on the earth, you know, continued. Then, no civilization that I know of was wiped out 4,300 years ago, and we've got written histories going through that period, so sorry, your God lied. And uh, I'll have to respond to him or her. I think it's a him. may not be a him. Um, later, saying that his God doesn't lie, uh, but we've got plenty of lies right in the scriptures that we can prove. So... We'll go with a Dodger Dave strike out here, okay? So strike one, the flood of Noah, 4,300 years ago, eight people surviving. That's bullshit, okay? Proven bullshit because we've got history, written, recorded history going right through that time of various civilizations. Sorry, your word of God is bullshit on that. Next, ah, which one will we pull out? Mm, well... The world being Adam six thousand years ago, so we we, we can we can uh, maybe no I'm gonna use that for a foul tip. 
Okay, genealogy of Jesus, New Testament. All right, so in Matthew, what are they saying? We got like, is it 40 generations from uh, David to Jesus? And then it's like 28 in Luke. So one of those is lying, strike two. All right, now now we'll go with uh, 6,000 years ago, Adam was the first guy, first flesh on earth. First flesh, that's amazing. We'll even take out the Joseph Smith part. Maybe we won't, okay? Yeah, because he, he, he went, Joseph Smith took that from first man on earth to first flesh on earth um, in the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible and the portion that's canonized in the LDS scriptures in the book of Moses. The first flesh on earth. Well, we got Gobegli Tepe, dated about 12,000 years old as a civilization. I just want to go easy, and this, I just I just want to make this a foul tip so I can so we can go to a, a hard strike three by going to the book of Ether and combining it with the uh, Joseph Smith translation of the Bible here. Okay, so in the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible and the part that's canonized as LDS scripture in chapter seven, uh, Moses chapter seven, we've got the Lord appearing to Enoch the prophet, speaking to him like one man speaketh to another okay as one man speaketh to another standing in front of the dude's face then about 1100 years later in our biblical or mormon biblical timeline we've got the brother of jared talking with the lord the lord who claims that he is both jesus christ and the father i behold i am jesus christ i am the father and the son Reference, Ether chapter 3, verse 14. But in verses 9 and 15, he makes it clear to the brother of Jared that he's never shown himself to anybody. Anybody. We're 1,100 years after where he's appeared to Enoch face to face as one dude talks to another dude about the surf, brah. <laughs> So he lied to the brother of Jared there quite clearly. And besides that, he's also violating uh, <laughs> Mormon current Mormon theology because he's claiming he's one and the same with the father. So, yeah. Strike three, your God's a liar. And let's be clear, a Mormon apologist might like to say, oh, that just means that God, the father, and Jesus are one in purpose. But that's not what was happening here in the Book of Mormon. It's very clear that that's not what was being stated. We have 19th century uh, Christian vernacular being used here. And in addition to that, Joseph Smith went and changed the Godhead in Lecture 5 on the Lectures on Faith to say that God the Father had a, was a spirit, just like the Bible says. But that he differentiated Jesus in stating Jesus had a resurrected and glorified body and the Holy Spirit well he was just he was just the uh, like the Microsoft cloud he was the combined mind and will of God and Christ not the spirit man that he became when Joseph Smith changed that again in section 130 and caught God the Father up to Jesus in the Mormon plan of uh, exaltation that he had uh, began to teach with the King Follett discourse where God was once a man who dwelt on an earth like us and worked his way up to godhood, and then fathered Jesus with one of his wives as a spirit child, whom they named Jehovah, amazingly, long before the name was invented by a Catholic monk named Raymond Martini in the 13th century. And he was an occultist. How did Jesus get named by that guy anachronistically, anachronistically, in the premortal existence, as far as Mormon uh, temple theology goes, or as far as uh, we have Jehovah mentioned in the Book of Mormon. How do we get that? Couldn't have been from like, uh, what did Tyndale start putting that in or something? In like the 15th century or something like that? And Joseph Smith or whoever penned that in the Book of Mormon was copying out of the Bible? Where, uh, yeah. Jehovah may have been substituted for Adonai. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or Yahweh. Well, how to get in the book of Abraham? 
Abraham, Abraham, behold, I, my name is Jehovah, and I've come down to save you from this priest of Elkina and Libna, Mamakra, and Korash. So I'm going to kill this dude if I can never stop talking, and you're going to go to this other land and uh, do great things. Except for Abraham wasn't Abraham at that point in the story. He should have been Abram. Abram. And the name Jehovah, once again, hadn't been invented. And the land of the Chaldeans? Well, the Chaldeans... Uh, weren't there for another thousand years, but whoever, oh, Joseph Smith got that out of the Bible, evidently, uh, which was also an anachronism. So, so many screw-ups in the book of Abraham. Yeah, Egypt doesn't mean uh, that which is forbidden. Pharaoh doesn't mean king by royal birth. And, um, God sitting on the throne, that was actually Pharaoh. The Egyptologist uh, told us what it really meant. It wasn't, it, it, it wasn't Elohim, was it? Like Joseph Smith said, the guy with his pants down with the, uh, yeah, I'm ready to go for sex uh, uh, position, talking to two dudes, Abraham, and the Holy Ghost, according to Joseph Smith. That's your God, Mormons. The guy with the stiff Twinkie sitting on the chair talking to two dudes about the grand keywords of the priesthood. That's what he's excited about to that point. That's uh, facsimile 2, figure 7 in your scriptures. That's not a God I'm willing to worship. Was there anything else about that book of Abraham? 100% false translation of the uh, fake of, of the Egyptian hieroglyphs by Joseph Smith went along with that. Let me see. He also said that the papyrus uh, yeah, that he tra supposedly translated it from which turned out to be just an Egyptian funerary text, text from, uh, you know, around the current era, 2,000 years later than Joseph Smith said it was Abraham, written by the hand of Abraham. The church now admits he lied on that. They just don't use the word lie. But God inspired him with the rest of the, uh, the content there, which is also, as I was just stating, completely phony. That's all right. The gospel's true. Under my power, our love grows stronger now with every hour. Look into my eyes, you'll see who I am. My name is Dodger Dave, please take my hand.